All right, million dollar question we get all the time. How often and how frequently do you water your starts? Well, I'm gonna give you as much information I can about that in this video. Before I do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. So, oh, sorry. So are we good? I was just showing the cat because I was showing oh. the cat. Baby bear. So a question we get all the time. Damn, I got sneeze. Okay, so let's actually transition over to the greenhouse and I can show you and explain to you how we know when to water. Come on. Okay, million dollar question we get all the time is how often do you water your starts? Well, if I knew that information, I'd probably know like the winning lotto numbers too because it's totally a mystery. So I don't know that. But what I can tell you is how you can know in your particular circumstances when you need to water. Because it's totally circumstantial, it depends on the sunlight, the soil, the plant, the vessel, the airflow, the heat, so many different things. I can't give you a specific regimen of when you're supposed to be watering. But what I can do is tell you, which is even better, how to figure it out on your own because it's also going to change during the year. And depending on what product you use, what seed starting mix you use is going to dictate how often you water. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you top five things that you need to look for to help make your decision on if you need to water your starts. So before I get into that, remember that watering is essential to healthy, happy plants. Too much watering, not gonna be happy. Too little water, not gonna be happy. Or even a combination of too wet, too dry, too wet, too dry is going to wreak havoc on your starts. They need consistent, regular moisture. Here's the top five things you need to look for. Seed starting mix, size of vessel, bottom watering tray, yellowing of leaves or how the leaves look and also what the top of the soil looks like. That's five things that you need to look for. I'm gonna walk through every single one of them. First. Seed starting mix, why does that matter? Well, there's different formulations of seed starting mix. Some that are formulated to hold more moisture, some are formulated to hold less, and that's gonna dictate how often you water. In fact, if you don't even use seed starting mix at all, let's say you use a kind of medium level potting mix, right? That's not gonna hold on to as much moisture as something that is a seed starting or germination mix. Because seed starting mix holds a lot of peat moss, peat moss holds on to moisture, okay? And that's gonna mean it's gonna stay wet for a longer period of time. In another extreme, let's say the only thing you have in your, in your garden to use is like a succulent mix. Well, succulents don't like to stay wet for very long. That succulent mix is going to dry out very quickly. Now, I don't recommend you use succulent mix, but I want you to see the differences between the two or three products, okay? So what seed starting mix you use is going to dictate how often you water. Now, that's a nuance you have to learn over time, but keep that in mind, right? Very important. So the second thing to, to think about is the size of the vessel, okay? If you're using some, some you know small vessel like this, well, obviously this is going to dry out quicker than this. That's because this is a smaller sponge. It has less surface area to hold on to moisture than this. Let's say you use some, you know, a big old pot. I don't even, I don't have a big pot, whatever. Let's pretend like this is a big pot. If you use a big pot this size, well, this is gonna take a really long time to dry out versus something this big, okay? So always remember the size of the vessel that you use is gonna dictate how often you water. The next thing you need to think about and look at is yellowing of leaves. Now don't get trapped into this, okay? Yellowing of leaves can mean a lot of things. It doesn't necessarily mean dry plants. In fact, prime example, this is a nice moist uh, six pack and it has yellow leaves. That's actually caught caused by the fact that we had these under grow lights for too long. So it has nothing to do with the moisture. So yellow leaves can mean too little water, too much water, not enough sunlight. But what it is telling you is, hey, hey, help me, I, something's wrong, hey. It's kind of like when a baby cries. It's like, wah, 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 but you don't know why it's crying, or at least that's what people tell me. I don't know how that works yet, but anyways. Okay, it's making some announcement. You have to deduce by other factors what that announcement is, but it is saying something to you, so that's really important. The next thing to think about is look at your bottom watering tray. 
okay? If you've taken any of our seed starting courses, you know that I really love using a bottom watering tray. The reason being is it tells me how much moisture is in that tray. If these guys look moist and there's water sitting at the bottom and they feel heavy, that means they have sucked up as much moisture as they possibly can and I need to dump the excess water that's sitting in this tray. That's really important. Bottom watering trays are fabulous because they help prevent disease, that you can actually recycle the water so you can dump the water on a plant. It's just all in all a really great product. Okay, the last thing that you need to look for is the, the color of the soil and also, you know, the plant in general. Here's a good example. If you guys had to guess which one had too much moisture and which one had not enough moisture, which one would you do? Do, 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 do. Okay, time's up. This one has too much moisture. How do we know that? Because there's already algae forming on the top of the actual six pack. The other thing is, and you wouldn't know this um, because you know you can't reach the camera and, and feel these, but this guy's heavy feeling. This guy's a lot lighter. And the other thing is, just take a look at this guy. Obviously, it looks a lot different. Now, I would be curious if we weighed these. Oh, let's just see. Okay, let's get a little dorky real quick here. So this thing is 14 ounces. And I know for those of you who are like really sciencey, this is not a solid experiment, but you'll get the point. Eight ounces, okay? So big difference in weight in these two. I'm just showing you because you don't need to measure them. You just go like this. But that's a really good indicator of whether or not there's moisture in these six packs. So now that we have made the decision on whether or not we need to water, let's talk about how we water, okay? Because there is some important factors to that. So what I would not do is I would not take my hose and spray these guys down, especially with tomatoes, um, squash, watermelon, cucumber, anything that has kind of a fuzzy surface to it, they're more prone to foliar diseases. And so by keeping them moist, especially in a greenhouse setting, I'm just going to help promote dampening off, um, powdery mildew, downy mildew, all kinds of stuff. Instead, I'm going to add water to the bottom of this tray, okay? Now, bottom watering from a tray works best if you're on a level surface. That's because, let's say, and this table might, because it's old and it's been water damaged, it might be leaning a little bit this way. And actually, if you come over here, you can see it is leaning a little bit because you can see the water is pooling down below. That means the ones at the front are gonna get more moisture. And you can actually tell in this tray that that is the case. You can see how some of them are moist and some of them are not. So I'm gonna make sure to move this guy to the front because he definitely didn't get enough moisture. <coughs> now I apologize for the coughing, but we harvested and processed a lot of very hot peppers in here and I can still smell them. Watering from the bottom is a good idea. Now how much do you water? How much do you put in? Well, that's totally dependent on how dry the actual tray is. If we pop over here, this tray is very moist and we can tell because there's actually algae forming on top so they've been wet for too long they're heavy and they look they look moist to me they don't look like they have the, the, that they're drying out okay so this tray i'm not going to put any water in it <clears throat> go down the line this guy looks pretty good this guy actually surprisingly feels pretty light not a lot of moisture in there. So I'm gonna put a little water in here. If I put in too much water, I'll know because the water will sit in there for a long period of time. You don't want water sitting in your, in your bottom watering trays for really more than like six hours or so. Really, after three or four hours, you come out here and you feel them and they feel heavy and there's moisture coming through them. That's an indicator they're fully saturated. And if there's water still sitting at the bottom, you need to dump that because you don't want stagnant water. That's very important. So I'm gonna water these guys here real quick here. Now I've been doing this long enough that I know, I'm gonna put probably two inches of water in here. Because we're in a greenhouse, there is going to be a lot of humidity in here and this is not going to evaporate as quickly as if it was outside and it was really dry. These guys definitely feel, still feel moist. These guys feel moist. And then we just watered these guys. So now remember, 
I can't give you the secret code on uh, and timing on how you water your starts. That's totally dependent on your situation. But remember the top five things to look for. Ask yourself what medium are you growing it in, seed starting mix or otherwise. How big is the vessel that you're growing in? Are you using a bottom watering tray? Is the plant telling you, help me, help me? And what color is the top of the soil and how heavy is the plant? Those are all really good skills to develop so that eventually you'll be able to look and see and just go like this and go, yep, moisture, no moisture. You'll get really good at it, I promise you. It's a really important skill and I've given you all the things you need to know to make sure you can really thrive in the garden. Thank you.